A good day, everyone. I am Mark, your fat friend. And I'm James, your black friend. And this is the Fat and Black Connection. Where we talk about anything and everything. As long as it's interesting to us, of course. Well, yes. And speaking of interesting, on today's episode, uh, we're going to be getting caught up. Last week's episode got thrown out the window. Uh, we, we decided to do some special live coverage on the Derek Chauvin uh, verdict. So uh, everything that we threw out last week, we're bringing back in for this week. So we've got a, we've got a lot of fun stuff to talk about. And uh, ultimately, the, the big piece of today's episode is going to be a history of us, part three. So, uh, you know, we do, uh, obviously this is a live broadcast where, uh, we are on Facebook live right now. We're here to engage and interact with you. So please let us know you're there and let us know what you're thinking. Yeah, yeah, yes. We have that comment box down there. So make sure you go ahead and type your comments and questions in there. And, uh, you know, we would like to try and incorporate them as much as we can due to the fact that your comments are kind of important to the show. (laughs) Well, (laughs) If they're interesting, of course. Right, right, right. Of course. <laughs> so, uh, speaking of interesting, so uh, James, uh, how are you doing today? We we uh, last week spent the time talking about uh, you know the Chauvin case, and we're back to our normal type broadcast. And um, how yeah. are you feeling? How are you doing? I'm I'm doing all right, man. Doing all right. It's uh you know it's a little bit earlier than we normally go on. So normally your boy's in bed right now, but uh, this is a good reason to be up early. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So obviously <laughs> we've we've made a little bit of a change. We're we're broadcasting a little bit earlier than usual, and this will probably become the new norm. Uh, we'll do our live broadcast a little bit earlier. Um, there's there is a reason for that, and uh, you know, uh, very simply put, we won't go into too much detail, but we are working on a new project, and uh, hopefully, we'll have more information to be able to share in the near future about that. A new project? Yeah, yeah. So uh, <laughs> I think it, I think it'll be a lot of fun, and I'm excited uh, to yes. get started on that uh, actually today. So. Um, Yes, we will sir. Yes, sir. We'll see how that goes. So uh, right before we, we went live with y'all today, we, uh, James and I, we, we sat and watched a broadcast that was uh, last night from Disneyland. Uh, it was primarily for cast members, um, you know, to say welcome back. They're doing soft openings this week to allow cast members to come ride rides and, and, and take in Disneyland to make sure everything's working well before you and I, the commoner, uh, get to come enjoy Disneyland. <laughs> the yes. yes, we we are not a magic maker. We're a magic taker. So, uh, <laughs> so uh, you know, it was a very short video. Uh, there was a, a couple of management from Disney talking about how difficult this time of COVID has been, and <sighs> uh, but we're excited to welcome you back. And it was, uh, I don't know. I think uh, the it was a little painful. It was, you know, what it was. It was a, it, it was a typical um, higher ups. Like you know, we want to give you our thanks and and blah blah blah. From you know, it's it, it's. It, I've seen it all before. From sorry, sorry, we had to lay you off for the last year, and you weren't really collecting a paycheck. I'm sorry that we put you on furloughs. Uh, yeah, it was it. So it was it was just one of those kind of like, uh, oh, you know, we we welcome you back type deal. But it was it was kind of just I've seen it all before. As I told as I told Mark during that broadcast, your thanks don't pay my bills. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> yes, this is true. This is true. So. I, and you know, I, I will say it was nice near the end of the video. Uh, you know, they they showed the castle being lit up, and yeah. they you know played the Walt speech from opening day. Um, you know, it gave me a little bit of the warm and fuzzies. And you, as you know, I'm super stoked to get back to Disneyland. So. No, as, as am I, as am I. I mean, I, it was just kind of like the beginning stuff was kind of like, but no, definitely that, that, uh, just having the castle illuminating the castle at night, which is such a, which is such an amazing sight in general. And then, you know, uh, with, with that speech, which has, you know, it's so iconic for that park. Um, uh, I mean, yeah, just like the Disney parks in general, that, that, his his uh, speech invokes a lot of uh, a lot of good feelings. So absolutely. Uh, so you know, uh, 
speaking of Disney, they did release a video. Uh, Disney Parks released a video uh, about two weeks ago now uh, that is for Fantasy Springs, which is a new area opening up at Tokyo's Disney Sea. And the reason that I think I want to talk about this is uh, we did do an episode a couple uh, about a month ago now on Disneyland Forward, which which it was a which is a project that Disney has proposed to the city of Anaheim to get some areas rezoned so that they can build expansions to Disneyland as well as to California Adventure. And in this video for Disney's uh, Tokyo Disney Sea uh, Fantasy Springs, what we actually see are models uh, built out to show this new land that will open at uh, Disney Sea. And it's the exact same proposal as what was as what we saw in Disneyland Forward. So it included right. a a new uh, Neverland section, uh, an Arendelle section, and um, I don't know what the Kingdom of Tangled. Yeah, was. that's why I, I forgot I forgot what that kingdom was called myself. So, um, but. Uh, definitely, I think it's, it's a pretty short video, about 45 seconds. If you haven't seen it, it is up on our Facebook page. I did link it there. Um, and I, I watched an in-depth video on that 45 second video that was probably about 15 minutes of uh, a person kind of narrating the actual, this is this, this is where this is based off of this model. This is the size of what, you know, this will actually probably be. It's pretty impressive. Um, Obviously, somebody had a lot more free time on their hands than I do. Um, but what did you think of the video, James? And and if that is what we see get expanded at Disneyland, what are your thoughts on that? And I think we lost James. He has been having some serious internet issues uh, over the last couple of weeks. So uh, we do apologize for the technical difficulties. Uh, I will go ahead and keep the show moving along as best I can on my own. Um, so while we try to get James back, um, give me one second and let's see if I can get him back in here. Uh, all right. So while we wait for James to come back, uh, Another thing that was announced uh, in the last two weeks is that Black Widow, uh, which is a part of the Marvel Cinematic Universe, uh, is going to be coming out in theaters here in the next month. Uh, but it will also be available via uh, Disney Plus Premier Access, which means that for $30, you would have the ability to watch Black Widow at home rather than having to go into the theater and pay you know, those type of costs. So, you know, James, uh, it looks like we've got you back. Yeah. And, uh, uh, sorry about that guys. So, uh, so we've got you back. Uh, we moved on, uh, to the black widow. Black widow yeah. Yeah. So, uh, for you personally, knowing that, you know, you could go see it in the theater or you could, uh, watch it at home, which direction do you think you're going to go? Uh, I, I've been waiting to see this in theaters. So, I mean, I've seen every, I've seen every Marvel movie in theaters. Um, so I, I don't see why I'm going to stop right now. <laughs> no. And, and that makes absolute sense. Um, you know, you think about you're a single male, so, um, it, it probably would be cheaper for you to go see it in the theater. Yeah. I mean, definitely. Like I understand, like if it's like a, you know, a, a family, uh, I mean, Heck, just I mean, your family, for example, like three, uh, and I mean, you got a young daughter, so I don't know about you know taking her to movies as of now, but uh, <laughs> but uh, but yeah, I mean, I could definitely see the, I mean, that's you know, in most cases would be at least what uh, almost uh, it'd be almost thirty dollars if you all were to go to to see a movie right now, anyways. So and that's I just for tickets, right? Yeah, that, that yeah, doesn't that's include snacks includes. and. And I mean, for me, I would definitely, I, I, I don't, I, I'm, it's, it'll probably be a little while before I actually go back into a movie theater, movie theater. I know they are, I know they have reopened and such, but it's still kind of like, eh, but like the drive-in, we have, we have a drive-in out here. It's, you know, it, it's just, I mean, I think it's just as good. 
and you have you're able to sit in the comfort of your own car or you can sit outside you bring chairs and stuff but yeah that's what i plan to see i do plan on seeing that at the theaters okay I, you know i do i do want to point out that one of the great values i think that you do get with the disney plus premiere access if you do it you know if you've got two three four people in your household uh, and you're splitting that cost let's say um is the fact that you can watch it as many times as you want yeah you, yeah. So th- there, there is some value there, but I agree. I've seen every Marvel film in the theater. Um, I'm going to continue that, but I'm not, I'm not necessarily against also paying for the premiere access. We'll see. Yeah. <laughs> so speaking of the MCU, speaking of Marvel films, uh, also in the last two weeks, the teaser trailer for Shang Chi and the Legend of the Ten Rings dropped. Did Ooh, you happen to see that? Yeah. I saw that day of, bro. Woo wee. Yes, our uh, our first uh, lead uh, Asian uh, hero, if you will, in yeah. the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Um, uh, I I am not well versed on Shang Chi. Uh, Me neither. Like I said, I I don't know much about him. But if that previews anything, it should be dope. Like regardless, the one thing I do know is that like the Ten Rings. Uh, I mean, we get we get uh, some sort of hopefully we'll actually see the mandarin uh, i mean we in iron man 3 the mandarin was introduced as of course sir king or sir ben kingsley uh but the problem was he was just an actor playing the mandarin so i was kind of like ah come on man i was a little bummed by that but seeing this and especially with and legend of the 10 rings which is the the mandarin has the 10 rings uh, I'm I'm interested to see how that if we actually get a real Mandarin now. Yeah, and and it sounds like we will, and so uh, I am very excited uh, for this film and to see how it plays in because every time Marvel has introduced a new character, especially ones that are are little little or lesser known, such as Guardians of the Galaxy, you know, before yeah. that film came out, who who aside from hardcore comic book fans knew who that was. And I think they did a fantastic job with introducing those characters. And here we are, you know, what, five, six years after the first film. And we love Guardians of the Galaxy, right? So I think the same thing can be done here. I think Marvel does a great job of introducing those characters. I'm wondering if we will see any introduction of Shang-Chi prior, perhaps through the Loki series or in some other way. Um, or if it's really they're just holding off until that film. Yeah, they kind of they they uh, they've been kind of keeping things under wraps as far as I mean I mean with Loki and everything else. So we don't. I mean Loki is. I'm not sure exactly how that's all going to work. I I do enjoy uh, the preview for that um, that I've seen, which is you know quite amazing. So we'll see what they do. But um, I'm pretty sure they're going to kind of hold this one off until they might introduce it some piece it to the end of one of the newer films. It might, we might even see something at the end of Black Widow for, for all we know. So. Yes, absolutely. And <clears throat> speaking of, you know, that Black Widow involvement, some things were changed for Falcon and Winter Soldier because Black Widow hadn't been released yet. Yeah. Um, because the original plan was Black Widow would come before Falcon right. and Winter Soldier. Uh, or should we say Captain America and the Winter Soldier? But hey, um, that was dope. That was, whew, man, that was, suit was dope. But we won't get into all that because it just premiered. So yeah, we'll we'll give it another week and we'll we'll touch on that a little bit more. Get the yeah. uh, black get the black man angle. Uh, I think is important. <laughs> so so following up on Marvel as well as Disney Plus, uh, Sony Pictures uh, has signed a deal with Disney, uh, to bring their Marvel films to <laughs> we'll Disney. See how long, we'll see how long that lasts. <laughs> I mean, you have to imagine that there is a minimum, you know, guarantee of X amount of years, right? Disney wouldn't yeah. sign something if it wasn't for some kind of minimum term. Um, but the nice thing is, we are only one film away from having the complete MCU on Disney plus and that's Hulk yeah. and gosh, darn paramount. They need to, uh, Oh, you know, they, I didn't realize they had their hands on that. Yeah. Yeah. Huh. I didn't realize that. That's crazy. I didn't even realize that. 
Yeah. So hopefully, you know, Disney will be able to make some magic happen and get the Hulk in there. And while it is not one of my favorite uh, films, it, it still is a part of the MCU and it's still necessary. it would be great yeah. to have, yeah, it'd be great to have that one-stop shop instead of having to try and go find, where can I watch homecoming? You yeah. Know? Yeah. Well, very uh, soon you can find it on Disney plus. That's cool. uh, so Next month is May. We're, of we're about a week. We are actually a week away from May the 4th. Yes, which, sir. Uh, as we know, May the 4th be with you is a thing. Star Wars, right? May yes. the Force. Um, and, Star uh, Wars Day. <laughs> yes. And so on Star Wars Day, uh, Disney Plus will be dropping the new series Bad Batch, Star Wars Bad Batch, uh, which um, for those who have seen the final season of uh, Clone Wars, you'll know that the Bad Batch is a group of characters that are clones that um, go on special missions, and we'll leave it at that. But uh, sounds like the series will revolve around them. Uh, Disney is uh, Disney Plus is also going to be dropping in May Star Wars Detours, which is uh, an animated uh, as well. Uh, which from the things I've read about it, it sounds like it's almost going to be kind of like Marvel's what if oh, okay. where, where it's stuff that could have happened, may have happened, but maybe didn't actually happen. Got you. Okay. Okay. Um, yeah. So those will both be dropping in May. So I'm excited for that. A lot of good yeah. content is, is coming out. Um, but the one other thing that I wanted to talk about from like a video type standpoint is this video that came out uh, in the last week that has gone super viral and uh, oh, the, maybe our... The bowling yeah, alley so, one? Yes. Oh. <laughs> so, so the video is called Right Up Our Alley. It is a single take drone flight video in a bowling alley in Minnesota. So I saw this thing and I used to run bowling alleys. And, and so... Um, it, it naturally caught my interest because it's inside of a bowling alley and, you know, people were talking about it. So I watched it and my gosh, like my jaw dropped because of just how impressive it really is. Yeah. And so, so of course I shared this video on our Facebook page. If you haven't seen it, you can see it there. Um, but it's amazing. It's, it's about a two minute video of a drone that is on the exterior uh, of this property and it flies inside of this bowling alley and flies throughout the whole center. You know, you're seeing the backside of the lanes, you're seeing their, their kitchen area, you're seeing their bar area, you're seeing everything. And it's all done in one single shot. And it's just impressive. What did you think, James? I, well, I mean, I know we watched that video. We kind of watched that video together, but um, man, like, how how just the precision that they had to i mean you know i mean going in between people's legs i mean being so close to the ground you know following uh you know following the the lane and then all of a sudden just like kind of flipping and turning up uh you know behind you know just before the uh the lane ends and and going up into the and to to show the backside and flying through like a window in the kitchen and stuff like that, man, I was like, bro, how small is this drone, bro? Like, <laughs> like, like um, I mean, uh, which was just super impressed. I was, I was super impressed by it. I mean, of course, I mean, so I think we might've lost James again. He's having great internet connection. So, uh, James, hopefully we'll get you back shortly. Um, yeah. So if you haven't seen this video that we were just talking about, uh, right up our alley, um, head over to YouTube, wherever, uh, head over to our Facebook page. I've got it on there. Um, it, it is, it's a very impressive video. Um, so I will tell you that, uh, I, for those that are, are normal viewers and listeners, you probably already know that I'm doing some voiceover work for a show called Secrets of Heritage House, uh, which is a mystery radio show. And uh, it broadcast uh, this Sunday. We had our first live broadcast for, for
or season two, sorry, not a live broadcast. Uh, it is a uh, pre-recorded series and we had our premiere on Sunday and uh, that was kind of fun to, to sit and listen to the radio and, and get to hear myself and uh, hear the other parts of the show that I'm not a part of um, to, to hear those, you know, acted out, if you will. Um, so if you have any interest, uh, you can definitely uh, go over to KMVC. It'll be rebroadcast Friday evening. Or if you wait until Saturday, the podcast will be available. And so that's Secrets of Heritage House Season 2. Please listen to Season 1 um, because there's a lot of information there that, that you need to hear going into Season 2. And uh, James, I, I know you're back and you, you've listened to some of uh, season one. Have you finished it yet or are you still working your way through it? Still working my way through it, man. And what do you, how far are you? Episode three, four, seven? Uh, I, I'm on episode three right now. Okay. And what do you think so far? It's an interesting story. Um, I definitely like, you know, like they, there's definitely some work. Uh, I mean, I, I definitely like... Um, just kind of that ambient sound that they have in there, which is, I was like, man, that's kind of dope. Especially like, you know, when they were going through airports and stuff like that and on flights, I was like, that's pretty dope. So, I mean, but other than that, I mean, it's, I'm I still, like I said, I'm still very early, so I need to get through it so I can, so I can listen to season two. Well, if you're at episode three, you've only got 10 more to go. It's 13 episode first season. And it sounds like we'll be doing 13 episodes for season two. So, yeah. Um, so you've got, you've got some time, but you do want to try and get caught up. Um, yeah. So we're going to do a new segment this week. And James, this is really reliant on your internet not dropping out because this is your segment. So Yeah, I, I, I am so sorry. I do not know what's going on. This has just happened, started happening like the last couple of weeks. So I do apologize. I'm going to try and find out what's going on with that. All right. So uh, this is going to be a new segment where... I'm just going to kind of drop a random fact on you and then, you know, we'll either discuss or we'll just move right on. So <laughs> I have no idea what James is about to share. So I'm hearing this for the first time, just the same as all of you. So. <laughs> all right. So this is hundred percent real. Check this out. Actually, Mark, I'm going to ask you in Africa, what animal do you think kills more humans? Um, you're not giving me like multiple choice. It's just, nah, nah, what just, animal, what um, animal, do, what animal do you think kills more humans in Africa every year? Uh, I'm going to go with hippopotamus. That is correct, sir. Yeah. That is 100% correct. Yes. A hippo, a, a hippopotamus kills more people in Africa than any other animal. That is because they, they might be, you know, big, and actually, hippopotamus means water horse. And uh, hippopotamus, though, when they get out of that water, don't be deceived by their size. They can move, and they're very territorial. So yes, so uh, I thought for I was like lions, duh. But no, that is not true. A hippopotamus kills more people in Africa than any other animal per year. That's interesting. I mean, I, I did not know that answer. Like James didn't share that with me in advance. Yeah. Um, I, I was going to go with some kind of snake or, or, or random, you know, viper, you know, or, or some insect. Uh, but I figured the reason that you would bring this up is because it would be something ridiculous that people wouldn't expect. And, you know, as I know from being on the jungle cruise ride at Disneyland, hippos are extremely dangerous, especially in water, but not only in water. Yeah. No, that's the main thing is, is that they're so, I mean, they are super territorial, super territorial. And uh, like I said, they are deceptive. They are deceptively quick uh, on land. Um, so when, uh, so definitely when, when they get, when they get agitated or you get close, they're, like I said, super territorial and those teeth alone can do some very big damage. If you've seen them fighting, you will know what those teeth can do to another hippo. So just imagine a human that's not so blubbery, if you will. <laughs> uh, I mean, I am, but not all humans are blubbery. <laughs> 
So that was random knowledge with James. We're debating on whether calling it the random knowledge section or the useless knowledge section. We'll let you decide. <laughs> Fun fact. <laughs> so, hey, James, I know a couple of weeks ago you had mentioned uh, that we were going to have another guest coming on. We, we had uh, uh, Mr. Brian Allen Hobbs from Disney Plus's Encore a couple of weeks ago, um, which was a lot of fun. Uh, oh yeah, yeah, but, that was a great episode. But you had mentioned <clears throat> that you had lined up another interview. Do you got anything else for us on that? Oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah. So um, we actually went. This is a guy that we actually know. Um, he is. So it, it looks like in two short weeks, two weeks. So hold on, our boy Joe Mag, Joe Magdalena, is going to join us. He is a Southern California based uh, soft. Ah, game designer, software system game designer. So he has worked with Blizzard. And so if you played any Blizzard game, World of Warcraft, Outreach, Diablo, any of those games, he's worked with Niatica, which uh, did uh, a game Mark and I used to play called Ingress. They did the, uh, they've worked on Pokemon Go that uh, the new Harry, po- well, it's not new really anymore, but uh, the uh, Wizards Unite, the Harry Potter game. Um, so we are going to be able to pick his brain and see what the next big thing might be. So awesome. Yeah, so dope, yeah. So I believe uh so it's niatic and uh, Oh, did I say that wrong? Yeah, you added an A on the end. Oh my bad. Niatic. Uh, <laughs> and uh I I know okay, so Joe Mag, we went we went to high school together, um, did some shows together. Um, good guy. Uh I, for a while in high school, uh, we told people he was my cousin just to mess with people. Uh, so Joe Magdalena, yeah, great guy, Joe Mag. Uh, for those that are into the Blizzard games, you probably know him. He was a pretty vocal person on the, the message boards and everything. And um, I know he was heavily involved in uh, one of the app-based games for the phone uh i can't remember the name of it right now so uh yeah that's that's exciting uh, I, I look forward to that um i haven't talked to him in a long time um i'm glad you actually... glad you reached out to him and so that'll be a lot of fun man yeah that'll so uh that's great do we do we have any other interviews lined up anytime soon uh we you know what i i've been i've been trying to get a hold of uh well one very special person i'm so, oh my god if i can get this guy it'll be amazing um and i also have another one that i he said yes i just need to confirm with him now so we can get him on here so it, trust me hang on to your hold on to your butts as my <laughs> Sam <Jackson> right. <laughs> so we got some stuff lined up well, I think this is a really good point uh, before we move into the history of us part three. Uh, I think it's time for a dance break. What do you think? Dance break. <clears throat> and we're back. Okay. <laughs> so, uh, you know, as, as we have on some previous episodes, we've uh, done a history of us part one, a history of us part two, and today, we're at a History of Us Part 3. Uh, oh, so trilogy. <laughs> hopefully. I mean, who knows? This could be more. Uh, <laughs> but we're definitely at least at a trilogy so far. Yeah. So uh, I want to pick up uh, from where we left off a couple weeks ago. Um, and, and where we were is we'd gotten into our college years. Yeah. Uh, but, but I want to pull back for a moment because one of the things that we didn't talk about from our high school days that I really personally want to understand is you were, um, you were in a group called DECA in high school. And I don't know what the hell that is. So maybe you could explain what DECA is and why you guys had to wear suits all the dang time. Um, Well, okay. Okay. Now, mind you, we didn't have to wear suits all the day time. I just happened to like wearing suits. Well, not all the dang time, but a lot of the time. Hey, I just looked good in them. What can I say? Anyways. No, you uh, didn't. That's the thing. Like, 
Bruh. Your butt, your butt. Like, remember, we talked about in high school, your butt was way up here, bro. And yeah. so it made your suits look like you were all big and like bulky in your your, your back region. It, you so. had a lower back hump. <laughs> Anyways, please, what is Anyways. DECA? DECA was a uh, marketing and merchandising, um, I guess you could say almost class. Um, okay, hold on. What does DECA stand for? That I don't even know. Like, honestly, like, I don't even know what that, De- like, we, we talked about this. We talked about, uh, like, I was always like, what is DECA? Like, but it was, DECA was, it was DECA, a marketing and merchandising base, I, I, I guess. I they never remember. at any point said DECA is an acronym for. for the, no, yeah, they never, like, I asked, I asked that a number of times, and I never got an answer for that. Okay, so uh, I'm concerned you were part of a group. You don't know what it was actually about. So no, 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 no. It wasn't so. Like I don't know what the acronym was for DECA. Uh-huh. I don't know what the acronym was, but it was a marketing and merchandising class, basically. And we actually we we had. Well, a it wasn't a class, con- right? It was it was extra. Well, it, it was, we it, like I had it as actually. Um, I actually, well, yeah, because I guess it was a it was a club slash class. We had, um, but we were we were just we were one chapter of um, of a number of schools. I mean, uh, there at least in our area in California, it was. Um, a lot of them did it through uh, mission. What was it the mission uh, ROP school. ROP pro or what is it? Oh, Something Mission like Valley that? ROP. Yeah, a lot of there were some schools that were actually connected through that, um, but like um, there was a number of schools that had their own chapters, and so when we would we would all end up, uh, we had a number of competitions throughout the year. What? what would you compete for so there was i mean god there was there was a bunch of different topics um so there was like a it was it was a um i know i did uh bear in mind folks this guy was heavily involved in this for many years i it was two years it was just two years um i man I haven't thought about this in so long and I don't remember, I mean, I've thought about it, but I just don't remember my, I don't remember what competitions I, I, I don't remember what I competed in. Um, I do know my senior year, um, I competed in a small business project. Now, um, the only problem was, is that we worked, I worked with another guy as a team and it was, it turned out that wasn't a team competition that was uh, a single competition. So we had all, we'd each worked on our own sections. And of course the section that he worked on was the one that I really needed for the competition. So that did not go well at all. Um, I'm, I'm still not sure I'm understanding how the competition works. So as we know, uh, you know, when oh, you oh, compete I'm sorry. in sports, it's one guy versus another guy playing this game. We know it at a lonely college theater festival. You would, there were competitions for who presented the best dramatic monologue. Okay. Think about it that way. Think about it. Like think about it in the um, context of like the theater festival. So there are schools from all over. Now th- the competitions that we had, were for um so we actually had our own um we had a small one for just mission valley like the schools in our area we had a small competition that that we only did that uh one year i know um we had a norcal competition which was actually kind of unusual because um we were the big we were like the biggest region in the state of course so we would have our own competition with all the schools um that had deca uh it they would come to wherever we had it uh it was visalia one year and then we had it in um uh san ramon you're still not telling me what you guys competed as no this is what uh, this is what i'm saying it was it was a bunch of different stuff i mean there was um there was manage. There was like, uh, man. Um, there was 
management level st- and and uh, associate level stuff. It was oh god, I can't even remember the name of some of these. Um, some of the competition stuff. I cannot. I would love to be able to tell you. I cannot remember the name of some of the, some of the stuff that. I don't need a I, name. It, what did you do? Like, you say it's marketing and management. So 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 what we would do is um, competition wise. So there was like a, a a test type a test type deal that we would take answering answering questions uh, based on um, whatever topic we were competing in. Then um, once that was, once you did that, there was kind of a interview. It was almost like an interview process. Um, and I, it, it was, it, I, I really, it's been so long, <laughs> Mark, it's been so long. I don't even remember like what we, um, like some of the competition stuff. I do remember that there was, there was placing, of course um which actually i did not i didn't place to go to i placed at norcal one year but i never actually placed at state which oh no lies i did i won something at state but not to get me to the national convention um for for deca but yeah this is nationwide by the way <laughs> Okay, <laughs> and actually so, collegiate level too, and so I like I, I apologize. I I really don't remember what I competed in. So I'm getting almost as much information from the internet as I'm getting from you. So DECA f- is formally known as Distributive Education Clubs of America. Oh, Distributive okay. Education Clubs of America. What does that's that probably, mean? That's probably that's probably why they that's probably why they dropped the acronym. <laughs> <laughs> on on DECA's website about DECA page, DECA prepares emerging leaders and entrepreneurs for careers in marketing, finance, hospitality, and management in high schools and colleges around the globe. Okay. I, I still am not 100% understanding or following so i don't want to waste too much time on this uh i was hoping you could enlighten me which i clearly was wrong so let's go ahead and move on no i mean that's the thing is i just like i said i it's been man it's been over what it's been like 30 years or 20 some years since i've even really yes as steven said i guess i should have just followed this acronym don't even care to ask what deca stands for um (laughs) Shame on me. Uh, so let's move on. Um, so yeah, sorry. <laughs> so okay. Uh, let's let's fast forward back to college, and uh, we we mentioned the Ohlone College Theater Festival. And oh, yeah. on a, on a previous episode, I had talked about my involvement and that you know I had been a room monitor, didn't like doing that. Um, I'd been a room host, didn't like doing that. I left, eventually came back for the Ohlone College Theater Festival as a judge. <clears throat> that was kind of interesting. Um, but James, James never left and more or less did the, the same exact thing, uh, except for maybe like your first or second year. I don't think you were doing what you were doing. But tell us, tell us about what you did and why you did it for like 15 years. Oh, well, no, it was, I mean... I haven't met a mic I don't like. That's what I used to say all the time. And so um, when I actually, so when I got to, when I got to Ohlone, um, I did the the first year I did the high school theater festival. I just let them do it as they normally do. The day after I was pretty much like, I went to Tom Blank, who was basically running. He was also, you know, one of the the, um, theater teachers and everything else up there. And I talked to him and I was like, bro, when I was in high school, I didn't like hearing you guys talk, you know? (laughs) So, you know, I mean, like, so, I mean, you know, we, we should get more involved. And he says, you want to take it over? And I was like, you want to take over like opening and closing? And I was like, yeah. So pretty much he shot me a script and I got to kind of move it around and, and, uh, you know, do, do what I wanted to do with it. 
and so uh that's kind of when that whole thing started so like my first my first year um i was a room host and uh this following year i was a build and then for the next couple years i was a building i was a building monitor um and then basically i moved out of doing all of that and was uh just kind of a liaison for the rest of the festival um so i was able to kind of come and go as i pleased um and uh be able to go to pretty much any building i was checking on build uh building captains making sure they needed anything giving directions to people whatever they needed kind of just more of a more of a, a floating guide i guess if you if if you wanted to put it that way but ultimately your primary responsibility was was hosting opening ceremony hosting yeah. and the closing okay. ceremony right and then um and i pretty much took i started taking over um fred alum love that guy um who was uh he was um one of the one of the tech uh theater teachers up there he actually was like hey would you uh would you do the um tech olympic relay for us would you would you kind of host that so i took that over as well so yes i was doing my three so basically three major things that i was a part of was opening ceremonies closing ceremonies and uh the tech olympic relay now I know that uh, I I left Ohlone around 2003 and right. I came back to do the judging in around 2011 and you were still there hosting. Um, right. Did you ever leave college during that time or were you going to Ohlone that whole time? No, no, no. Oh, no, no. I wasn't going to Ohlone that whole time. I went there for, I was there for a while. Um, I was there for a while, yes. But I, by the time you came back, to to actually judge i was no longer a student there i had actually been i'd been working uh well i mean i've been working the entire time i was there anyways but um but no i when you came back i was no longer at ohlone as a student i was my primary thing i would come up um i would come up a few days before the festival and get uh get everybody uh and you know try Tom would call me up and would be like, Hey, um, festival's coming. You in, of course. And so, uh, he was like, come up this day or whatever. And so I would basically talk to all the classes because if you were doing, if you were involved in, uh, acting for the camera, um, any of the theater classes, things like that, you were involved in the festival. So, um, it was like, you had to do at least a day or something like that of it. So, um it was so i would basically come up and get uh try and get everybody kind of pumped up for it, all that kind of good stuff um see who was interested you know i had people that were coming back so i i knew that they would mostly help me with the opening ceremonies and if there was any new people um who were there who were interested in possibly helping with opening ceremonies i'd get them involved and um we kind of chat and you know let them see what they'd be interested in doing and so we'd kind of get that going that way so when was the last time you hosted at ohlone college theater festival uh dang what year was that i don't even, it was a so you came back in 2011 12 i left california in what year did i leave california 20 uh 16 16 so um i think four i think 13 or 14 was my last year hosting so you, so, so you did so, it for about a decade yeah and actually the crazy part was is that i actually i said i was done i said i was done and um the last day of the festival, um, I came just to check it out. And um, like they, the, 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 the staff at the time took, <laughs> took it. And it, I mean, it was horrible. The closing ceremonies were absolutely horrible. And um, some students who, some students and teachers saw me 
afterward and like and i was like how how did everything go and they were like oh my god it wasn't the same without you like we need you um <clears throat> and so i was just like Ugh, i didn't want to do this but i went to fred right after i said as i looked at him i said i'll be back next year and, I, and so i ended up doing it one more year um after i stopped um and then um after that the, well Aloni went through some changes as far as like they ended up having to cancel because the school was being remodeled and all this kind of stuff so um as far as the th festival goes now i well and i mean of course with 2020 and pandemic and all that kind of stuff that threw everything for a loop so um hopefully hopefully it will you know it will continue because that was that was a big thing for um you know a lot of theater students um and teachers loved it and so um hopefully it'll be back we'll see we'll see you know actually um our buddy uh chris who was who was a teacher a theater teacher now um he actually ended up bringing his students one year and he was like are you gonna be there and i was like oh no i'm done now man and he's like ah i was really hoping my kids could see you do your thing and i was like ah man uh unfortunately and actually that year they i didn't even know it was coming they they kind of took me out of the loop, but it is what it is. So uh, that gets us, you know, kind of to talking about, you know, the end of your tenure with that. Um, but also in around 2003 is when I left Ohlone. And um, I, I wouldn't say that there has ever been a time, as long as you and I have known each other, that I would say we haven't been friends. But there are definitely points throughout our time where we've drifted apart gone right. done our own thing mm -hmm. um but when we have come back together at any point it's almost like no time has passed yeah <laughs> and, yeah and so what i want to talk about for for a couple of minutes is uh you know 2003 to about 2011 there is a pretty good gap there was about eight years where i was off doing my thing and you were off doing yours and uh, I don't necessarily know everything you were doing during yours. And I, I don't know that you necessarily know everything I was doing during mine. And so yeah. I figure let's take the opportunity and I'll kind of walk through what I did. And then we'll let you walk through what you did to where we came back together in around 2011. So yeah. um, for me, uh, I left Ohlone because I had gotten a job at uh, Dave and Buster's and uh, unfortunately, I wasn't taking the job too seriously in the beginning. Uh, and I, I had a manager who I, I still remember his name. I remember his face to this day. He, he basically sat me down and had what he called a come to Jesus talk with me, uh, where he lit me up one side and down the other and told me more or less that I was, uh, a, I was a piece of crap and that, uh, either, uh, in the next two weeks, I was going to be out of a job or that uh, I would have proven him wrong and still be working there. And I remember walking away from that conversation and, and I had two choices in my head, which one of which was to say, okay, forget you and quit and leave, try to go find something else. Or me with my stubbornness was, I'm going to prove this butthead wrong. And, uh, <laughs> and so I decided that uh, I was going to take it more seriously and I was going to prove this butthead wrong. And uh, I had just finished up a, a show actually up at Ohlone, the Fantastics. It was not put on by Ohlone, but it was at Ohlone. And I decided, okay, now I've got to prove this guy wrong. I don't want to go find another job. I like working here. I already know a bunch of people. I had been there for, I don't know, probably two months at this point. So I decided to turn it around. And I started showing up to work every day early. I started showing up, you know, 100% ready to go uh, so that when my start time was, I was in position rather than, you know, showing up if I was scheduled at seven, showing up at seven. And you know what I mean? Just making those little adjustments. And um, after two weeks, he, he pulled me aside and he said, I didn't think you would, but you proved me wrong, um, you know great effort. Let's, let's keep it up. And three or so months after that, I actually got promoted. 
um, and, and moved my way up to working in the back of house instead of being out in front uh, working with all the customers. I was in the back of house working in the cash room. Um, I, I went on at Dave and Buster's to get promoted to a business analyst position, which uh, is a fancy way of saying you're the person in charge of everything from a fiscal standpoint. I paid all the bills. I made sure all the payroll got taken care of. I was responsible for the in-store HR. Um, everything, accounting, payroll, HR fell under me. I had a staff uh, of people that worked for me. And this was all because I decided to prove that butthead wrong. I turned my career around and inside of 18 months, I was basically in this, in this role of leadership. And uh, I proceeded to, to work at Dave and Buster's for almost five years, just shy of five years. And the reason that I ended up leaving Dave and Buster's <clears throat> was because I had uh, interviewed for a position that I immensely qualified for. And I thought I was the obvious choice and I didn't get it. And I was extremely disappointed. Uh, they went with another internal candidate from another store, which mm -hmm you know, they did have more experience than me. So it was hard to debate that, but it made me realize that there really was not much of anywhere for me to go at Dave and Buster's unless I wanted to make a drastic change and move to the front of house again. And I wasn't really interested in doing that there because those managers were working 70 hour work weeks, sometimes not getting off till four in the morning. Um, it just, it was not a great quality of life. So I put my resume out on the internet because that was something we did at that time. And it was new to, to start putting your resume out there yeah. that way. And a headhunter found me from a little bowling company that was opening their first property in California. Uh, so at this point we're in around 2007 and I go for a meeting in downtown San Jose uh, with this headhunter and another gentleman. And they're telling me about this bowling company. They're, they're just now in, in the phase of hiring managers. Then they're going to be moving on to hiring staff and training. Uh, it's a brand new uh, concept, um, at least to the West Coast. Uh, and so it was interesting. Um, you know, they made me an offer uh, to go and be the arcade manager. And I was like, you guys know I've never ran an arcade before. And they were like, you came from Dave and Buster's. You've got that insight. And I was like, yeah, but I'm the business manager. I don't, uh, I don't full, I, I know a little bit about the games and I can learn. I'm, I'm a smart fella. So ultimately what this company was trying to do was trying to snatch leadership people from these high end facilities, cheesecake factory, Dave and Buster's uh, to, to, hopefully show some legitimacy to their company. So I went to go work for them because they offered me, they made me an offer. I really couldn't refuse. Uh, <laughs> you know, here, here I am uh, at this point, I, I think I was 24 and uh, they offered me a lot of money. They offered me opportunities, you know, that they, they had plans to open up uh, further locations around the country and, so there was a lot of opportunities presented uh, and I was like, you know what? I'm going to take the chance. So I left Dave and Buster's after just shy of five years, uh, went to this new company. They were opening the facility called strike in uh, Cupertino and uh, was involved in the whole process from, from development of the menu, the arcade, um, you know, hiring training staff. It was my first, real like full opening of a new location for a major company like this. I, oh, wow. I had gone, That's... I had gone and done some similar type stuff when I was with Dave and Buster's, but it was never on this scale. And especially as a member of management where you're heavily involved in finding vendors and, and things of that nature, it, it was, it was a unique experience and it was a lot of fun. And I was at that location for just shy of a year because now they were opening a location in Southern California and they wanted me to go be a member of the opening team for that. So I moved down to Southern California uh, to open that facility with, with a buddy of mine at the time who uh, we, we got an apartment and 
we were living in Irvine, California, opening a location in Tustin, uh, going through a very similar process. I was at that location for, again, just shy. No, actually, I was only in that location for about six months before moving to the East Coast, um, where I, I, I think I had proven myself to some extent, and the company felt like they wanted some strong leadership out uh, at one of their East Coast properties. Um, and I knew the manager who was running that facility. We had worked together in Cupertino. And so I was like, yeah, I love that guy. I'll go work with him. So I moved to Bethesda, Maryland. <laughs> Bethesda. Merlin. Merlin. And, <laughs> and uh, I, I worked at that, that facility for one year. Uh, that was the deal that we had made. I, I really had no interest in living on the East Coast for forever. So we'd made a deal, me and uh, the executive management in New York, that uh, I would move there for one year. They would give me a raise. They would give me a promotion. And then at the end of a year, I'd have the option to come back to one of the California locations, either Northern or Southern California. Um, and so it seemed like a great deal. It was hard to, to pass up and going to work with a guy that I really liked working with in Cupertino. So I get there, I'm, I, I pack all my stuff up, I fly across the country, uh, I get to Bethesda, Merlin, and the day I literally get there, the manager that I knew from Cupertino tells me, hey, they've asked me to move to Miami to go work at that location. <laughs> oh, okay, great. So here I am in Bethesda, Merlin, uh, basically a week after I get there, the one person in the world that I know is gone. Wow. So that was a very bad foreshadowing of things to come. Uh, but we're coming up against time and I don't think I'm going to be able to get into anything more. So, uh, Oh, wow. That yeah. Went fast. Yeah. That went so, really fast so with that, um, you know, we'll go ahead and tie up the loose ends here, you know, um, Definitely appreciate y'all tuning in, listening to this. I guess there's going to be a history of us part four at least because uh, still got to know what I did. I think we spent too much time on DECA. Yeah. Yeah. I'm Let's, sorry. Like I said, I, I really, yeah. I'm, I'm sorry. I thought it would be. I thought you might know something about, you know, since you were involved with it for two years, but. like That's the thing. I thought I did. And it just, I mean, I, I just can't it's really okay. recall anything right now. It's okay. I forgive you. Yeah. So for those of you out there that may have missed any part of today's episode, um, please go back and re-listen to the entire broadcast. Uh, it should be up in just a few hours via Anchor, Spotify, Amazon Music, iHeartRadio, Apple Podcasts, Breaker, Google Podcasts, and Radio Public. Also, be on the lookout for the video, which should be up later this week on YouTube. All right. Well, with that... I guess it is time to go, but uh, remember, uh, please, please, please uh, listen back. Like he said, leave us any comments on the Facebook page. You can go to Fat and Black Connect on Twitter. Leave us anything there. We have an Instagram. We need to use some more of that. But, you know, that's uh, what Fat and Black Connection on Instagram? Fat and Black Connect. Oh, Fat N, N, the letter N, Black Connect on uh instagram so we'll get some more stuff up on there as well guys thank you thank you thank you so much for tuning in again hippopotamus <laughs> 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 <laughs>